Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we are in the month of June. And let me tell you something. God is carrying us by himself. And he's got a plan for our lives. He's got a plan for our nation. He's got a plan for the nations of the earth. And so you keeping yourself in him is what is going to make you prosper. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Your word is truth. And that is our sanctification, Lord. Thank you as your word goes forth right now. I declare it is removing every body, destroying every yoke. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 12 Romans chapter number 12 and I read to you verse 1 he says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service praise God he says I beseech you see I'm begging of you now I love the way the Amplified puts this he says in view of the mercies of God see he is taking knowledge full knowledge of the mercies of God so he says in view of the mercies of God that you present your bodies holy or present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God the Kahina tells you the quality of sacrifice that you don't present your sacrifice anyhow see he says present your body as a living sacrifice and then the quality of that sacrifice should be what holy and it should be such a sacrifice that is acceptable unto God. Now, how do you present your body as a living sacrifice? He didn't say present yourself as a dead sacrifice. He said present your body as a living sacrifice. See, normally, when you sacrifice an animal, what do you do? You kill, you slaughter that animal, it dies, and then you sprinkle the blood and do all stuff with it. But this time around, he says, no, not a dead sacrifice, but as a living sacrifice. So make no mistakes about it. He's not sending you to go and die or to go and kill yourself. See? So now he says, present yourself as a living sacrifice, meaning submit yourself completely to God. And that's what the Lord is saying in this month of June. Submit yourself to God as a sacrifice. And then he says the sacrifice should be holy. Now, how, how do you function? Submitting yourself as a holy sacrifice unto God. Now, holiness, you know, many people have um, this concept of holiness. And, and sometimes when you hear them talk about holiness, it looks so impossible, <laughs> you know. And because people strive to be holy. They strive, you know, oh, we just want to be holy. And then when you say, what is holiness? They really can't explain. They can explain what it is. All they can talk about is, you know, not, not fornicating, not committing adultery, not lying, not doing all that. Is that what holiness is? <laughs> it's God. No, that's not what holiness is all about. When you say something is holy, you know what you're talking about? You are saying that thing is completely dedicated to God. See? For example, this pulpit, you know, I can say this pulpit is holy. Now, what makes the pulpit holy? It's glass and steel. But what makes it holy? The moment I say this pulpit is going to be used for the Lord, 
See? And I said, now, this pulpit is dedicated for the Lord's use. Now, the moment I say that, I have declared this pulpit holy unto the Lord. Now, you know what that means? It doesn't mean the pulpit in itself have become something else. No, it just means that it's only God that is permitted to use this pulpit. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, and that's what it means. That only God is permitted to use this pulpit. Now, what that means, I can't just take this pulpit out, you know, or someone can't just come to me and say, hey, sir, um, we're having a seminar, a business seminar out there. You know, can I, can I use your pulpit, please? We, we just realized we, we don't have a pulpit. Can I use your pulpit? Now, no matter how nice, no matter how friendly I am, I can't do that. You know why? Because the pulpit is holy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's holy. Now, he said, sorry, sorry, I can't give you that. So why can't you give me? Because the pulpit is holy. What are you talking about? You are actually saying the pulpit doesn't belong to me anymore. See? Now, now, many people will not understand this. But that's what it is. It's not holy. and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not mine anymore. I have given it to the Lord. Now, it is only the Lord that tells or that dictates what it should be done with. That's what it means. Now, do you know the truth? Do you know the Lord can? You know, while, while the person goes, oh, I want to use it for a business seminar. Please, please don't need it. I say, ah, no, no, no. It, it, it's not for that use. It's, it's for God's use. Now, do you know the Spirit of God can minister to me now and say, hey, give it to them. See? Now, the moment he gives, he says, give it to them. And then they use it for their seminar. Hey, guess what? It's still holy. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's still holy. You don't say, eh, now nah, it has left the church, so it's no more. It's just a normal pulpit now. No, it is not about the pulpit. It is what it is dedicated to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, now that's, I'm trying to explain to you what holiness means. So, it's holy because it has been set aside for the Lord's use. Now, when he says we should present ourselves as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, what is he saying? He is saying, hey, get yourself to that place where you, by choice and by personal covenant, submit yourself completely for the Lord's use. Does that mean go be a pastor? No, that's not what he's talking about. He see, because he is speaking to every child of God here. He is not just speaking to pastors. He is not just speaking to the clergy. No, 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 no. He is speaking to every child of God. He says, I beseech you therefore who? Brethren. By the message of God that you present your bodies. A living sacrifice. So you present your body before the Lord as a living sacrifice. And then he says the sacrifice got to be holy. What does it mean the sacrifice has got to be holy? You hand over yourself, you hand over your body to the Lord. And, and from that moment, you know one thing, hey, this body belongs to the Lord. This life, this person, he belongs to the Lord. You know what you're saying? You are saying, nobody can use this life. Nobody can use this being, this me. Nobody can use me but the Lord. See? So, what does that mean in essence? It doesn't mean pack your load and go and start staying in church. And say, I don't want to do any work again. I want to be holy unto the Lord. Nah, nah. You know, people have, people have made these blunders in life. Say, so, oh. I just want to serve God. So they resign from their jobs and then they just sit down and start reading Bible and oh, that's all they do. They read that and say, oh, what are you doing? No, I just want to serve God with my life. So from reading Bible, the next day they go to church, they go walk in church, they sweep, they, Pastor, is there anything you want me to do? As, as humble as that same, you just might not be practicing what the Bible is referring to as holiness. Because in your mind, you feel, oh, there's so much debt out there. I mean, if I go to work, I'll mix up with these unbelievers and they'll be saying all sorts of things. And they'll, no, no, no. Holiness 
is when you realize that, listen, I cannot do anything except the Lord commands me. You see, that's what Jesus meant when he says, hey, the Father has not left me alone. Why? He said, because I only do those things that are pleasing to him. See? Jesus spoke about this in John chapter 12. Let me, let me show you that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 12. I'm showing you what holiness is. John chapter 12 and verse 49. It says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. Did you see that? It says, For I have not spoken of myself. So Jesus is saying here that I can't even speak for myself or by myself. Now, you need to understand what he's talking about here. He says, I can't speak by myself. Why? Because the Father who sent me, he has given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Now, why did he say what I should say and what I should speak? He is talking about his mouth being holy unto the Lord. And what does that mean? He says, my Father who sent me, doesn't allow me to say anything else but what he tells me to say. Now I've always told you this, you say with your heart and you speak with your mouth. Now, sometimes we don't know the difference, so we confuse it. You know, sometimes say, I, I, I said this to him. You're like, no, that's not what you said. So, but that's what I said. That's not what you said. And sometimes people communicate differently, you know, what they are speaking and what they are saying. Now you see this in, in, in churches most times. For example, someone comes to you and says, hey, please can you give me transport money there because I'm very rich right now. Now you see, he is speaking, I am very rich right now. But he's saying something else. He is saying, I am broke right now. Now how is he saying that? He's saying it from his heart. And when you go, I don't get why are you asking me for transport if you are saying that you are very rich? And then the person goes, don't you get what I'm saying? <laughs> see? So you see, you are speaking from the heart. And you expect them to hear what you are saying from your heart, not what you are saying with your mouth. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now Jesus is telling us here that in his consecration as holy, unto the Lord. Remember, he says we should present our bodies. Now, our bodies also means our tongue. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your mouth. So you present your body unto the Lord. Jesus said, I can't even do anything by myself, but I have received commandment from my Father, what I should say with my heart and what I should speak with my mouth. That is holiness. How is it holiness? I'm not, I don't belong to myself anymore. It is the Father who owns me now. And it's what the Father tells me to say that I will say. It is what the Father tells me to speak that I would speak. Wow. <laughs> it's God. That's holiness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, why is this so important? You see, because you are beginning to learn how to walk completely in the presence of God. You don't walk in the presence of God. You don't walk in your sanctification. You don't walk in holiness. You don't walk presenting yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. And then you still act and behave anyhow. Just like I gave an example of the pulpit. You don't say this thing is dedicated to God. Someone say, oh, I need to say, ah, I like that guy very much. Give him, come on, use, use it. Or you even begin to rent it. You can't, you can't even try that. Praise God. You can't try that. You can't. Why? Because it's holy unto the Lord. Our time is up right now, praise God. But I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. Listen, you've got to get a grip of what holiness is all about. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Step out today knowing 
that you are holy unto the Lord. And God bless you. Bye-bye.